Good morning everybody, Dreamforge here with another build guide for Battle Brothers. Today I want to introduce the Phoenix or the Dawnbreaker. This is one of those builds I will do in the future. They have the same skill set, but you can play them as a Nimble Bro or as a Battleforge Bro. I will just show this in a minute how I will actually do that. You just change two perks and the gear, obviously. But why does this build exist? This build exists because I run a lot of times into situations where I find an amazing Bro, but he has zero melee defense. So you can't really use him in the front line. He's then level 7, he has like 10 melee defenses, this is horrible, right? But he has very good melee attack, he has, he has decent resolve, he has a lot of fatigue. I created this build to use up his strength that he will have, so he can do a lot of damage, because of fatigue and a good chance to hit. But I will minimize his weaknesses, he will be in the back line, he will protect in your flanks. He will stand behind your destroyer or your tanks or whatever you like having at the outskirts of your company, right? He will do a lot of damage, he will kill a lot of enemies. And he's really cool because hitting an enemy and killing an enemy with a sword lance actually um, increases the chance of <laughs> beheading an enemy. And who doesn't like that, right? You have three hits because they use Reap. Reap is an AoE attack. Again, he does a lot of damage. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. How you skill this monster? He will be in the back line, so it's absolutely fine to suit him as the first perk. Then, of course, I will go a little bit more safety. Then I do this. I will go with the Phoenix first because it's the first thing that stands here. <laughs> Dodge to just be safe. Something you don't have to take. You can actually skip that if you want, but it's it's a nice defensive boost. He stands in the flanks because and he will get swarmed sometimes. There will be a lot of enemies, you know, those fights where you have like 30 enemies or something. It will take some time until he reaps through all of them. <laughs> I feel this is just a nice addition. You have one perk or two that are a little bit flexible, so I take this for the Phoenix. Okay? You absolutely need this. This is a Polam user because sword lances, even though it is a sword, it is more of a lance instead of a sword. If you go in-game... Over this, it has the perk of being a pole arm and not a sword. This is a pole arm weapon like a bill hook or a pike. Yeah, nimble is for the phoenix obviously something you want to have. And then we're talking damage. We want to do a lot of damage. We want to do a lot of reaping, a lot of beheading, a lot of misery at our enemies, you know. I like to take this perk. You can move two tiles and then hit actually with this thing or with the bill hook because of this, because of polar mastery. But maybe you feel, okay, I just stand there, I don't really do anything. You can you can say, I don't take this, I take this, because this is very fatigue happy. Reaping is pretty expensive, but does a lot of damage, especially if you hit somebody and kill somebody, then you have another swing, so you get the idea. I mean, this is a, an absolute killing machine, but you need a lot of fatigue for that. So you can kind of switch. You can even say, you know, I never get hit, so I can just skip that and then you can just take both. You have a little bit more flexibility. I would build him like this. And you can say, hey, I never move. I don't really need this. <laughs> I just take this to amplify it fearsome, right? But you can choose whatever. So now um, let's go to the original build. Maybe you say, I don't like phoenixes, I don't like nimble builds at all, I want to have a battleforge version of this, that is absolutely possible. Then you have to skip this and take brawny, because brawny is very good for heavy armor to have more fatigue. And you need a lot of fatigue, instead of nimble you take battleforge. Now we have a dawnbreaker instead of a phoenix. That's basically everything that changes. So gear-wise, in the beginning, I said, you just give him your gear that you have, not the best gear. This is There are better versions than that, for example, and better versions than this helmet. But he doesn't use a lot of fatigue in the beginning. You can just give him whatever, just any reach weapon, and he will do a lot of damage. Support your bros. You will always have a dagger with you to dagger down, to see targets, to get the loot. Later on, again, this is now the Phoenix. He has good nimble gear, you can of course have better famed gear, but this is kind of what you do. I switch between a hound, because he's at the outskirts, he's at your flanks, 
Um, having a dog sometimes really helps, especially if there's a lot of enemies. Sometimes this is very useful. Then you have the, the star of the show here, the sword lance, and you can switch for single target a little bit more uh, armor piercing to a bill hook, maybe to finish some, some enemy off, or maybe there's one very tough enemy, let's say a fallen hero that you really have to, to kill because he's possessed or something. Then you can switch to the bill hook and do massive damage. You could even, this is just an option, because he has a lot of melee attack, reaching the heights of 90 to 100, Give him, instead of a dagger, a whip. This is just to give you more safety, more tactical options, because this arming sometimes can save a life of a bro, and especially at the outskirts, when there's so many enemies, disarming that orc warrior, disarming that one shows and that you can't deal with it this, this turn. But this is just an option, you know, you could take this instead of this. This is the same here. Or you can say, you know what, he uses Fearsome, I want to have as much resolve as possible, so just playing into the idea of this build. So I give him a necklace, this, or the Hexen, or in the beginning, the Nacho necklace is absolutely fine. Going with him to, to the arena would make sense too. But he has, of course, now, um, the Dawnbreaker has Battle Battleforge gear. You want to give him the best fame gear you can get, basically, when it comes to this. So not, not the best, but the one that is the least heavy. Because the more fatigue that build has, the more reaping, the more killing will be happening. And I mean, this is the whole purpose of the build. <laughs> Getting those hats, you know, with the sword lands. This is actually a fun build. Alright, we, we talked about gear. We talked about um, late game gear. We talked about the, the perks. The last thing we have to talk about is how you level him, what stats he should have. And this is what you would expect from him basically. You level melee attack, this is very very important. You level fatigue, not something you have to level every round, but you should level that. You want to bring him to 40 to 45 resolve or of course. If you get very good resolve rolls, every resolve roll will cater into his fearsome, so this is of course something you could do to, to make this stronger. Because he will probably don't have any stars here and has very bad melee defense, you should level the juice and the freeze, but the ones I wouldn't, I would actually skip them and put them into HP maybe, resolve, fatigue, or maybe something to even range defense. You don't have to push this so much than others. He's a backliner and this is where he will be the whole time. And this is the whole purpose of the build. Bad melee defense, but the other stats are really good. And then you just level him, right? Alright, I feel like that's all that is to say for the Phoenix slash Dawnbreaker. Very cool build. Really like the idea of using bros that seem to be very good, but they have like this one weakness and you can use them to their full potential. I have a lot of fun with this. I plan to have two phoenixes in my next run with a peasant militia if i'm not get eaten by spiders in the night <laughs> whatever i wish everyone a great day that's it for me for this build guide do something fun wherever you are and i see you in the next video have a good one